everyone. Uh, we're going to start off today. This is uh, today is we're focused all on our thematic projects. So these are projects that uh, are much more focused in their scope. They're focused and they will support the overall goals of Metal Earth. And so there's a variety of different pro uh, projects and uh, research uh, groups that we'll present today. And uh, yeah, it should be should be interesting. You know, a lot of this stuff is just getting off the ground in terms of the VMS and some of the other thematic projects. But like Zhu Ang, who is going to present now, is just about to defend his PhD, so a little bit more advanced. Um, so thanks for your attention. Thanks for coming, and please use the chat room or uh, the live. Uh, just just speak up after the presentations if you have any questions or comments. And uh, as always, we welcome any feedback. So Zhu Ang, it's up off to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Russ. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Xu Yang. I'm a PhD candidate from Lawrence University. Uh, the talk is about an update of the semantic project of Mantors. So the title of this talk is the Magmatic Controls on Porphyry Carbon Gold Deposit Formation, Understanding the Rarities in our King. So from these figures, we can see most of porphyry carbon deposits are formed in the Phenozoic, and they are very rare in the Precambrian, but here in our King. So what we don't know is whether the rarity of porphyry carbon deposits in the Precambrian is caused by erosion loss or unfavorable tectonal magmatic settings. So in a previous study, we have identified oxidized suffrage on magmas from the porphyry carbon deposits by 1.88 billion years ago. So it suggests at 1.8 billion years, similar metagenic processes for porphyry carbon deposits uh, ha have been operated. So the paper has been accepted by the Nature Communications. So it'll be online next few weeks and um, more details uh, can be seen there. So this, the research in this talk focuses on old deposits and old rocks at about 2.7 billion years ago. So um, yeah, so we want to understand why this deposit formed. So from this map, we can see most of porphyry carbon deposits are formed along subduction zones and arc related settings. So the relationship is not only spatially, but also genetically. That's because a perfect carbon deposits requires a moderately oxidized and volatile rich magmas. And such magmas are characteristics of the subduction zones in Phenozoic. And in the Phenozoic subduction zones, subduction delay can transport oxide material from Earth's surface to the mantle. Dehydration of the ocean and crust and sediment can release oxidized fluids to make some metals, the mantle wedge and the mantle to form basaltic melt and plating at the base of the crust, experience the marsh zones in the melting assimilation, storage, homogenization. So after this process is will produce the anesthetic melt, uprise and accumulate at, a, at the upper crust level to form a magma chamber and the oxidizer self rich rich magmas in the magma chamber are favorable for porphyry carbon formation. So if the magmas or the sources are rapidly reduced, so there we will have a, a large volume of the early sulfide saturation. So check file sulfide elements such as copper and gold will be compatible with the sulfide and uh, the content of the carbon and the gold will be depleted in the magma chamber. So the magma chamber in the upper crust level to form porphyry carbon deposits, the potential will be limited. So such types of the reduced magma and the re and the sources um, were most likely formed uh, in the Precambrian in comparison to uh, the Phenozoic. From uh, this uh, diagram, we can see compared to the high marine sulfate content and uh, oxidized submarine by source in the Phenozoic. In most of the time of the Precambrian, the marine sulfate contents are very low and uh, the submarine by salts were very, very reduced. So particular in the Arkin. So in the Arkin, the subduction processes were not well accepted to have been operation. So all these factors might not allow for recycling of the oxidized material from Earth's surface to the mantle and form uh, oxidized and sulfur rich magmas. So, if the hypothesis is correct, so why there are small groups of the porphyry carbon deposits at about 2.7 billion years ago, understanding the metagenic processes for this deposit 
will help other, us understand why such type of deposits are very rare in the arcane. So this study focuses on three deposits. One is the Cote Gold deposit, Sejon deposit, and Crossa deposit um, in the arcane southern Abtibi greenstone belt. So in southern Abtibi greenstone belt, most area has been covered by the volcanic rocks, suggesting erosion loss is very, uh, is not so significant. So rarely of the porphyry covered deposits in this area should be, be caused by uh, problems, uh, issues uh, rather than the erosion loss. So in the Arcane South and BTV Greenstone Belt, the volcano tonic rocks involve a similar pattern to other cratons. And uh, from the early stonolite, diorite, trongemite to grand diorite and tonolite to potassium rich sandicotoids, like a coarse monzite, coarse cyanite, to potassium rich alkalic intrusion, to later stages of the S type granite uh, formed by the cross and excess. So the tectonic setting in the Arcane South Abitibi Greenstone Belt can mainly be divided in two stages. One is the before 2.695 billion years ago, and the areas experienced episodic short term subduction of bloom arc in action. So the fusic rocks or intermediate fusic rocks um, were interpreted to be formed by intermittent melting of the uh, oceanic crust. So after 2.695 billion years, so the areas experienced the mountain building stage with a thickened crust. The um, the process, so the, the building this stage is interpreted to be caused by the subduction processes uh, by evidence of the uh, geochemical features of this type of megamoths uh, and uh, the ox hafnium oxygen isotope recently published by the David Moore and uh, his rich team. So the, the three deposit we choose, one is a coated gold deposit, a sejong deposit, and cis crossa deposit. These three deposits were formed um, the two types of tectonic settings. So they are different from uh, Phenozoic porphyry carbon deposit. And uh, the genesis of the three bullets should be, uh, have a different, uh, uh, a different. So the Cotigo deposit is mainly hosted by the diorite and the magmatic hydrogen breacher. The magmatic hydrogen breacher developed by the aeration associated with copper and uh, gold mineralization. It contains a large amount of the gold also geochemical significance, but undefined copper. So the breacher and the diorite intrude the pre mineralization tonalite, and the diorite is interpreted to be called of magma for the mineralization. Another deposit is the Sejong deposit. Sejong deposit is mainly hosted by the magmatic hydrogen breacher with the core of the trongemite. The trongemite is compositionally and petrographically similar to the trongemite two phase in the flare So the trongemite phase is interpreted to be the consortium magma for the mineralization. So another deposit is a cross-out deposit. Cross-out deposit uh, uh, developed a porphyry type alteration mineralization and cross-cut by the ferrous spot porphyry. The ferrous spot porphyry is also mineral mineralized and altered. So the ferrous spot porphyry was dated as same age to the Clifford tonalite and the Clifford grand, uh, with the minor grand diorite, the Clifford stock. So the Clifford stock has uh, are interpreted to be the consortium for the mineralization and uh, the formation of the uh, absolute timing of the uh, these rocks are also consistent with the uh, random austenium uh, monomonite datings for the mineralization. So we collect the sample from here and as well as the project theory porphyry um, for further investigation. So the coated gold diorite is uh, yielded to uh, enrichment of the large iron list of five elements, cesium, rubidium, and barium, and also yielding negative the European anomaly. So suggesting a plagious fractionation, and also indicates the source of the magma are relatively shallow, and the, all the magma magmas were relatively anhydrous. So the Cotigo tonalites predate the mineralization, is not a focus of study, but they have a different stress element uh, spy diagram pattern <clears throat> to the diorite. So Flavio and C. Jones trongemites have a relatively flat, relatively flat the trace element spy diagram pattern, except uh, the depletion of strontium phosphate and uh, titanium, and as well as uh, some negatives, the European anomaly. 
So this feature uh, suggests the fractiona fractionation of the plastic class aptite and the iron titanium uh, oxide. And also, so the fractionation of the plastic class uh, indicates the magma were relatively, magmas were relatively anhydrous and the source of the magma were, uh, it was a very shallow. So Clifford tonalite and the plastic ferric porphyry and uh, I call it a tonalitic rocks. And uh, uh, this rocks yielded a large iron list of five elements enrichment, but without the European anomaly. So it suggests that the magma were relatively uh, hydrous and uh, the hydrous features of the magma uh, is also supported by the common occurrence of the amphibole in Clifford tonalite and some uh, amphibole in the plastic fibre porphyry. So we analyzed the zircon oxygen and half an isotopes to trace the source for the magma. So the Cotegos, Dira, and Tonlite, the zircon's oxygen values are located in the mantle value, suggesting so the magma are mantle derived. And uh, uh, the clay for the Tonlite has uh, values at the lowest parts of the mantle value, with the smallest groups of the analysis outside of the, uh, below the mantle value, suggesting the source of the magma or the magma chamber has been altered by the high temperature fluids, meteoric water or seawater. So it's quite interesting to see the C. Jones trongemite here has the lowest zircon oxygen isotope value, even in comparison to other trongemite phase in the flavor. So it suggests that the C. Jones trongemite formed at the time of the magma chamber has been extensively altered by the Hydro, uh, high temperature fluid, such as seawater. So this information is important for us to understand why the C. Jones transmite has been mineralized. It may be because of high temperature seawater has been leached, has leached some metal from surrounding volcanic rocks to provide in the main chamber for, for further mineral, mineralization. So we will discuss later in combination with other type uh, of the data. So another focus of this study is to constrain the oxygen parameter because as we said before, the ox oxygen efficacy of the magma are controls the behavior of the check file element. So um, it, the lower oxygen efficacy of the magma will affect uh, the own forming potential of the magma chamber. So we use multiple oxygen parameters such as zircons, recently published an amphibole suffering appetite and magnetic ammonites, these are oxygen parameters. So as, as we know, the ABTB experienced the multiple stages of the metamorphic deformation. So the areas we study here had been, the rocks had been variable in metamorphosed and altered. So we try to identify some uh, fresh minerals like a phenocryst and a zircon. The left one is a, a, a typical amphibole phenocryst and even also uh, with uh, some uh, fractures and uh, some uh, minor um, alteration, but the composition homogeneous suggests the, the, the composition can be uh, representative of the primary composition. So the amphibole here has a uh, also amphibole cause and in the amphibole, we also find the appetite inclusion. So the CR image of the appetite inclusion will be shown in the next slide. So the, Primary zircon are very common because zircon itself is a robust mineral. And from this representative image, you can see the zircon here is oscillatory zoning. And in the zircons, it contains two appetites. One appetite is the left one is a homogeneous in CI response, and the right one is the appetite in a patch zoning. And the left one, so we interpret it to be primary, and the right one, so we interpret it to be secondary, and the appetite has been altered. So in the zircon, zircon is a good, very good robust minerals that are can preserving the primary composition of the mineral inclusion. So why the appetite has been altered? That's because there is a fracture here. Oh, um, there is a fracture here and the fracture may, might the player conduce for the fluid infiltration. So there's a two representative of primary and the altered appetite. From the left image, you can see it's a, all of these are CR images. And the left ones, the uh, appetite yielded faint 
uh, oscillator zoning in cell response and analyze the zinc spectros uh, to obtain the sulfur speciation in the appetite further for investigation of the oxygen fugacity. So right once the appetite has a mosaic zoning and uh, the page zoning and suggests the appetite has been altered and uh, metamorphosed. <clears throat> We also try to identify some mag primary magnetic ammonite rock uh, mineral pair to estimate oxygen fugacity. But the only type of sample we have identified as such a mineral pair is uh, uh, from uh, the Clifford Tonlite. And the mineral pair is uh, hosted by the plagiarist class. And uh, right ones is a magnetic ammonite that I included in, in petrography. So we use the composition of these primary minerals to estimate oxygen fugacity. So this, uh, from this uh, uh, diagram, you can see from the vertical geochemistry, the uh, Clifford tonalite has the uh, highest uh, zircon, highest FO2 as oxygen fugacity, FO2 value of FMQ plus 1.2, and the gold diorite has a FO2 value about FMQ uh, 0.6. So uh, it's 0.6 to 7. And the C. Jones transmite has FO2 value of FLQs about zero. So for C. Jones transmite, it's uh, comparable to other transmite phases in the flavoring. And all these samples have high uh, uncertainties. So the high uncertainty are mainly caused by low abundance of the elements in the zircons involved in the oxygen parameter. So they're, uh, it caused by the um, uh, by the zircons themselves and uh, the analytical precision. So I also obtained the results from amphibole composition and uh, the amphibole composition, the least involved composition for the Clifford the tonalite rocks has a low FO2 value about 2.5 and there's a higher than the uh, Cote gold, uh, than the Cote gold diorite and at about FO, FO2 value of FMQs at about, about 1.7. So um, amphibole oxyparameter was calibrated for volcanic rocks. And uh, a previous study has suggested that the amphibole composition may overestimate the oxygen fugacity of the protonic rocks by one log unit. So we will consider in this information to, uh, to obtain the interpreted uh, FO2 value from the amphibole composition. So it uh, should be one log unit lower, it's consistent with the zircon geochemistry. So we also obtained the appetite zines, it's a X-ray absorption near edge spectrum, uh, spectroscopy, spectro at soft KH. So we obtained, we, we, we have found that the primary appetite from the c transmite, the sulfur is mainly sul sulfate with the negligible other species of the sulfur. The primary appetite from the Clifford stock the sulfur is also many sulfate with a small peak of the sulfur four plus. So compared to the primary appetite from a cliff salt, the metamorphosed iron appetite has the lower sulfur six over total sulfur ratio. So there is one appetite hosted by the zircon. Uh, there's also significantly lower and it may indicate that the appetite has not been, uh, the sulfur in the appetite has not been uh, severely altered. So we use a sulfur six plus over sulfur ratios of the from the, of the appetite to estimate the oxygen fugacity using the oxygen parameter calibrated by the Brian's conic in 2019 and the Clifford tonic rock tonic rocks have, uh, have FO two values of FMQs plus about a point nine and C John transmite have FO twos uh, of FMQs uh, maybe uh, above. Uh, 2.02. So the oxyparameter was calibrated for uh, using uh, experimentally using the composition of basalt. So compared to the basalt and anisite, uh, there is a composition effect to the sulfide to sulfate transition uh, in FO2 space, like as uh, this curve is comparable uh, to consistent to the composition of the trondamide in Sejun. It's an iron post trondamide. So also with a uh, different pressure, different temperature, the sulfide and uh, to sulfate transition, we are moved to uh, the different FO2 space. So after considering all this effect, uh, we consider 
the effect of the temperature pressure and the composition to the melt uh, melt uh, sulfide, sulfide, the sulfate transition will have an effect on the sulfur in appetite oxygen. So we obtain the values about the C Jones transmite and the FO2 value is above FMBQ minus 0.3. So the result is consistent with the result from the zircon geochemistry. The clear from tongue light uh, has FO2 values at about FMQ 0.5 is also consistent with the other um, a result from other oxygen here. The mechan aluminum mineral pair has the highest FO2 value. Um, it may be records of the later stages of magma crystallization. So the Clifford uh, tone light is associated with colossal deposits. The Clifford tone liquid rocks uh, have uh, geochemical features and oxygen scarcity that are similar to Phenozoic magmas that also has a higher carbon content. So we interpret the crossout deposit that similar, has a similar metallogenic processes to the Phenozoic porphyry carbon deposit. And the coated gold deposit at the bottom uh, have a FO2 values of FMQ 0.7, and, but it also has a higher, the rocks also have a higher cup content. It may suggest the cup content are maintained by the a less evolved composition of the coarse diorites and diorites in the coated gold. Um, all the carbon can be transported uh, by the mildly oxidized uh, magma. So the flavor and seed joints um, formed with a, associated with the magmas of FO, with FO2 values with FMQ0. It's quite low, it's uh, relatively reduced, and also has a relatively low carbon content. So considering uh, the information from uh, in zircon oxygen isotope uh, value, um, we interpret it as a C joint deposit represent a rare case where English of externally derived heated seawater facilitated its metal fertility in a relatively reduced magma chamber. And the code goes, uh, but uh, we conclude the variables mode of formation of this deposit, but the coarse diorite and the diorite consulted for the code goes mineralization. And uh, are not very common, it's maybe only 10%. In the upper crust rocks in the Abitibi crystal belt, and the magmas with the lower zircon oxygen isotope values are not also very common, are very rare. So we don't know whether the oxidized magmas of the sodic magmas are common or not in the uh, in the in the Abitibi, uh, in the belt and particularly in Abitibi. So all these uh, factors lead us to conclude that the apparent rarity of the porphyry type of copper gold deposit in our king may be attributed to either local restriction of favorable metallogenic conditions and all preservation or exploration biases. So in this research, we have uh, collaborated with uh, several excellent researchers from Laurentian Rossi, University of Michigan, and University of Alberta. We appreciate a a several individuals for their field assistance and uh, analytical assistance and the value discussion. Thank you. That's uh, all my talk. And uh, any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much, Joanne. Um, is there any questions? Oh, well, there's one from Jake in the uh, in the chat room. Uh, what other accessory phases have you identified in the zircon? You know, and hydride, epidote, titanite, etc. And can these impact the FO2 estimation? Uh, yeah, um, how can I open the chart? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, so we have identified uh, some uh, plastic class and uh, some uh, key field spar and the key field spar may be a crystallization result of mirror inclusion, but uh, a lot of crack on the mirror inclusion. So we didn't uh, work on that. Um, titanite, uh, no, we didn't. We didn't identify a titanite, neither epidote and neither anhydrite. And uh, the uh, one, I think anhydrite is the most common in the uh, oxidized magma. So uh, for the Cote, sorry, for the Clifford tonalite, one of the oxidized magma we have identified. Uh, no, we didn't, we didn't find a hydrate. Yeah. 
Julian, it's, it's, it's Bruno speaking. Can you go back to your last slides on, on your conclusion? I just want to ask you if you could elaborate on your last conclusion, number yeah, four. Yeah. What do you mean by local restriction of favorable metallogenic condition? What, what yeah, mean I mean, specifically? yeah, I mean, uh, these are favorable metallogenic conditions are mainly just local, such as a uh, coated gold, the diorite. Um, this type of rocks are not very common in uh, compared to the tonalite, such a type of rocks are not very common in activity during the belt and. Uh, um, the cross oh, sorry, the C. Jones deposit, the magma with the lower uh, zircon oxygen isotope values are uh, also not very common. So, um, from the rock type, and the, we cannot find the similar metallogenic conditions are very common in current defined or current explored RBTV greenstone belt. So, we interpret it maybe the local restriction of variable metallogenic conditions. And we don't know the, why they are very local and many estimates based on the rarity of the similar rock type. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you, Bruno. Uh, we have time for one more question. A uh, quick one, Ross. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so what is the, what is the other evidence that the water involved is seawater. I mean, if you have these low delta 18 O values, that can easily also be meteoric water. So, so what is the requirement for this water to be seawater? Yeah, it's a uh, many generate uh, uh, interpretation, and uh, um, the seawater in the Sea Jones deposit is formed at about uh, in a down. Oh, sorry. Uh, Roy Naranda's uh, VMS camp, and uh, that area has been well studied. And uh, VMS deposits need the seawater form. And uh, in the flavoring and uh, sorry, flavoring intrusion, it was uh, reported by uh, a paper by, uh, uh, by uh, 2003, I think, is a mineral deposit. Uh, I, I think the author is in the chat, uh, Mark Huntington, and uh, he has identified the, the uh, there is a envelope of the of the flavoring intrusion uh, to suggest that there is a infiltration of the water into the flavoring uh, intrusion. Uh, so flavoring magma chamber. So based on all the evidence, VMS deposit and uh, there is an envelope of the flavoring intrusion. So we interpreted there, there, it was a seawater, not a meteor, meteorite water, because it's most likely Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Yuang.